Good afternoon, everybody. Today is Friday. It's the 19th of April, 2013, and this is Brian Shannon speaking from alphatrends.net. We'll take a look at these markets and some individual stocks here. Uh, for the week, we did lose some ground in the uh, major equity markets. The S&P 500 down 2%, NASDAQ down 25 Russell was down 3.25%. And uh, let's take a look. Well, gold continued down a lot, too, down 5.8%. But let's, let's take a look at the action here. We were talking about the key level of support for this market being down at 153.5 to 154. We made a low this week of 153.55 and we did cut below that 50-day moving average. We closed below the 50-day moving average really for the first time uh, this year. And as I like to point out a lot of times that it's the direction of the moving average that's more important than one or two closes below it. Oftentimes the first time that we close below a rising 50-day moving average, it will end up being something that people regret selling, but it brings in a lot of un educated shorts and people who put stops under there. You have to ask yourself, who's who's going to short after the stock the market has just dropped four and a half five percent here over the prior week and unfortunately for us I suppose there are still people who are uneducated enough to do that and that they place their stops in obvious places it'll become a little more apparent in the Nasdaq in a moment what I'm talking about um, but we we brought up the possibility of from a failed breakout could come a fast move so far we're holding the rising 50-day moving average in the key level of support which we'll hold for next week as well for when 53 and a half basically uh, to 154 that's our key area of support that we want to see this market hold if we break below that then we have to take a little bit further step back and say if that level then hold, fails to uh, uh, be recaptured that is it if it holds its resistance uh, then this market could be in for a deeper sell-off but right now there's no evidence of that we have a market that initially found some support at the 10 and then near the 20-day moving average now there's a 50-day moving average looking at a 10-minute time frame you can see we're still below a declining five-day moving average so we don't want to get aggressively long in here based on an intermediate term time frame but we did see some improvement uh, over the last couple days here and you can see that we're starting to show what looks like an inverted head and shoulders pattern now ideally we'd like to see this five-day moving average flatten out a bit first before it would reclaim that level and if we take a look at it on a 30 minute time frame you can see that it's pretty choppy in here that uh, you know if we get a bounce maybe we head up back up to 157 but this market is beginning to look a lot more like something that's going to at least need to correct through through time that is maybe we bounce and then turn sideways a little bit um, but if we break below and hold below that 153 and a half you have to be very careful with some of your longer term stuff and obviously you're gonna see that a lot of the stocks that you're in are breaking down and we have the catalysts out there now as we saw today uh, in shares of IBM that uh, you know we're in earnings season and it you know Apple, I'm sorry, uh, IBM gapped lower and closed right near the low of the day. I, IBM has been really volatile on earnings uh, here lately. We also saw that Google reported they had broken some support uh, previously and made this lower low. And for the people who shorted on that lower low ahead of earnings, well, they got squeezed pretty hard today. Let's go back to the equity markets, though. The NASDAQ, for its part, you know, we were, we've been talking about this trend line that represents the essence of trend and that it's been in this channel and that channel channel the, the midpoint of the channel really has been uh, something that we've seen uh, become pretty important and we've got that 10 and 20 day moving average in that area right now as I was saying to subscribers on Thursday you know who is left to sell short or to sell as it breaks this low it's very similar to what we saw earlier this year that is when we saw this little shakeout in the uh, in the Nasdaq that you know we had broken new lows for the year and then from that failed move we saw this fast move higher so we're seeing it in both directions that people who chase the breakouts after a move has already uh, occurred or who chase the breakdown after a move has already occurred are getting trapped on both sides of the market so we want to be looking at again the overall uptrend we're still in we're still in an overall uptrend you know it's it's getting to the point where it looks like you know if we break down below some of these uh, important lows per you know maybe near 67 that uh, things could get a little 
little bit sketchier, but for now we still give the benefit of the doubt uh, cautiously uh, to the buyers. We have a declining five-day moving average in the interim. So the long term, let me let me back up. The long term, we still give the the benefit of the doubt to the buyers. Over the intermediate term, it's a little bit sketchy here with this declining five-day moving average and the fact that we've seen uh, this prior important area. Uh, it hold is resistance and then slightly as support that will have to be taken out 69 to 69 and a quarter for us to really have any further uh, conviction in, in the upside of this market we take out again 67 uh, things could get uh, a little bit hairier so keep that in mind the Russell 2000 as we uh, noted had a uh, down 3.2 uh, percent week and now we're underperforming year to date in there as well the Russell had been one of the stronger markets but now it's uh, you know it's 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 behind the S&P but ahead of the Nasdaq let's take a look at the action in here though we saw a breakdown below the 50, rising 50 day moving average and from there again the question is who's left to sell short you know as it breaks down in there we got a strong bounce that created a lower high and then when we looked at the intermediate term we turned cautious in here as it got below the declining five-day moving average now it's beginning to try to stabilize a little bit more in here and I think that next week we're going to continue to see this same level uh, be an important area for the uh, Russell 2000 that is that we see uh, that there's then some support in here uh, near 80, uh, $88.50 to $89 a share. That's the bigger support level. We also have a 100-day moving average in here. And if we take a look at some Fibonacci, we can see that year-to-date range that we've got, uh, we're, we're down to the 61.8% retracement as well. You could also do another uh, look at uh, retracement levels from uh, the November lows, and the 38.2% would have get us down to 87 and a half. Um, if we take a look at the volume weighted average price is another thing to consider. We broke below that on Monday and closed below that volume weighted average price year to date uh, for uh, four out of five of these days this week. And that tells us that year to date, although we are up, uh, what was it? Uh, um, where was it, Russell? Uh, seven and a half percent. The average dollar cost buyer, the volume weighted average price for the year is up here at 90.80. So it's not maybe as easy as it's looked to make money in there uh, if you are, you know, employing some kind of strategy like that. The strategy I like to look at is what's the primary trend. We do remain in a primary uptrend. If we break below and hold below 88 and a half, then I would start to get a little bit more suspicious and think that we're going to come down and test deep deeper levels. For now, we have to look at the intermediate term trend also is guilty till proven innocent with a declining five day moving average, but maybe going to stabilize a little bit in here and get a bounce. Either way, next week uh, could be a, a pretty pivotal week uh, moving forward. The semiconductors, again, the, this group has kind of taken on a neutral look to it. We saw that this breakdown uh, was reversed and then we kind of just held above that uh, key 34 to 34 and a half area this week. Financials, did come down and test that uh, rising 50-day moving average for the third time, and it broke it this time. We closed one day below it, and uh, we also got uh, in here we see uh, that we saw a slightly lower low, and today we saw a bounce in there. So the 1780 was our focus. We dipped slightly below that yesterday, but uh, today we're seeing a little bit of a bounce, right up to the rise, declining rather, five-day moving average. So I would expect a little bit further pullback, and then uh, if we see that 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 little pullback holds uh, we get a little bounce but you know back below 1775 next week uh, could be uh, something that leads to a, a more significant decline the volume weighted average price year to date was tested and held to the penny today let's take a look at that for the S&P 500 by the way it's down here at about 152 uh, 40 or so the uh, let's go back to the financials now but the financials you know looking at the 10 minute time frame you have to say okay it was a nice little bounce back today but we've got that declining five-day moving average so we cannot trust it here we're still in a period where we've got this long these longer term uptrends are starting to at least correct through time a little bit in here and if the time correction doesn't uh, take care of getting rid of the supply then we'll break support levels and continue down to uh, other important levels of potential support and in the financials we can look at the uh, Fibonacci year-to-date in here um, 
61.8% brings us down to about 17 and a half. And again, we tested the volume weighted average price here to date. So the, the main focus, I think, for these markets is that we have longer term uptrends that have turned somewhat neutral near term. We could see another round of selling if we break these important levels of support. So be sure to be aware of those and, and listen to the message of the market uh, to, to see how it responds to those levels. Those are not areas to buy. They are, uh, you know, they're not uh, suspects to arrest. They are persons of interest. They're areas of interest where we want to study the action a little bit closer, put together a well thought out plan and implement it in a disciplined way. The uh, gold market was up $1.17 today. I'm going to stand by uh, my what, what I said on Wednesday, which is it's a, it's a broken market. It's going to experience some bounces within this overall downtrend, but it's in a downtrend. It's done real bad damage by breaking under this bigger level of support over here and perhaps we see some bounces up uh, towards that level but to me it doesn't look like a, a good risk reward trade we're getting gaps up uh, you know, four out of the last five days, um, and then we kind of bleed off a little bit throughout the session. And I just don't see the opportunity in there to uh, really stay interested. Silver was flat today, but had a, a real rough week as well. And this chart's badly damaged. Someone wrote on YouTube that uh, the buyers are still in control. They are simply not in control. If you, you there's just there's no arguing that. Um, anyways, let's take a look also at the uh, uh, the twenty year bond. Um, uh, ETF, the uh, TLT. We saw that big movement uh, in, into this uh, a couple weeks ago, and it's holding on to those gains real well, which is good for interest rates, obviously. And uh, let's take a look at Apple. Apple, as we said, you know, it broke the important level of support at that 420 this week. That didn't come as a surprise at all. Again, I'm going to point to the direction of the 50 day moving average, guilty till proven innocent. Consolidations within a downtrend tend to resolve in the direction of the prior primary trend, which in Apple obviously is lower. We got down right about to the 50% retracement. This isn't the exact level, but the 50% retracement of the uh, lows from 2009 up to the high that we saw last year. So we're right in that 50% retracement level. And I was also going to point this out, which is just a, a simple measured move. If we take a look at the last down leg in here, that the last uh, leg lower was you know from this high right up here uh, to, to down in here and if we I've got these two lines that are equal so what we're gonna do to get a, a measurement an objective is to take that uh, what we what we would call in the measured move um, point A to point B right in here uh, is generally going to equal point C to point D that's a way of giving us a, an objective and we came down basically to that at about 385 but there is no evidence that the buyers are regaining control in here. We saw the market gap down in a strong rally today, uh, but then what happened? It fell apart. It got back below the volume weighted average price, and it closed with a, a loss of $1.52. So on a closing basis, there's still no one in the last year, really, who has bought this stock and held it and is in a profitable position. We still are bleeding off. We're still guilty till proven innocent. There will be bounces. There have been uh, significant bounces in in this overall downtrend, but it takes time to heal the damage done in these markets. Uh, I will leave you with that. Hope that everyone has a good weekend. Take a look at alphatrends.net if you're not familiar. Um, sign up for that um, box at the top that, it, that gives you a swing trading report, and that'll get you on the list to get this uh, email, this uh, video emailed to you each week and uh, other emails. Um, not, no solicitation type stuff, uh, not spam, but other useful information from Alpha Trends. So again, thanks for tuning in.